many things to discuss as you can see from the list other than the usual top-down analysis we have many miscellaneous categories to go through today so let's begin Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 6th October 2018. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu before we begin we go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return superior profit is not an investment advisor this session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual in today's topics, we will carry out a top-down analysis. First, we will look at the commodities oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the market's direction. We'll study market's direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of the market ETFs. In addition to aligning our trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength as well. We will study the industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we look at several examples of recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF EUSO using weekly backdrop template and daily hop on template. Together we call this template at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color remains bullish, that is cyan. However, the candle shape became indecisive. It has hollow body but long upper tail. In the daily chart, in the last market roundup, I discussed that price was already above upper boundary lines. Therefore, though we had a cyan color candle, that is bullish candle, after a till down, we were not going to take any long trade. It was already overbought. From there, oil went up and then pulled back to the upper boundary level. It is still overbought, so we are not going to try any long trade. It is in the uptrend, so we are not going to try any short trade either. Gold ETF GLD. In the last market roundup, I discussed that we will not try to take any long trade in gold until the ETF breaks above the memory resistance line. The memory resistance is in weekly and it is also there in the daily chart. This week, gold closed higher. However, just below the memory resistance lines. Therefore, we didn't have any long entry opportunity in gold. It closed just at the memory resistance line. You may keep an eye on gold to see if next week it gives us a breakout 
long trade setup. You may try to take that using fine tune template to make a precise entry. From commodities analysis, we now move to market breadth analysis. We are looking at NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index, both using weekly charts, along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline, and up down volume. As this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, it is to be used more for long term investment decisions, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. NASDAQ and NYSE are shifting their leadership. Last week, NASDAQ went up and NYSE went down. So NASDAQ was the leader. This week, NASDAQ and NYSE both went down, but NASDAQ went down much more. So NASDAQ underperformed. We are seeing this shifting of leadership between weeks for quite a long time. In NASDAQ, this close memory trend line is now broken. In NYSE, one trend line is broken, however, there is another memory trend line very close to the closing price. And over longer term, until these lower memory support lines are broken, they will continue to be in uptrend. The internals turned bearish this week. All the six internals went down and all of them closed below zero. From the internals, we can see that NASDAQ was much weaker than NYSE. New high low advanced decline and up down volume. All of them turned sharply lower for NASDAQ. For NYSE, new high low turned sharply lower. Not so much for advanced decline and even less for up down volume. This again shows that NASDAQ is now weaker than NYSE. Over the longer term, of course, they are both in uptrend. One thing to note that by the time NASDAQ and NYSE comes into downtrend, if they do so, that will happen when the lower memory support lines are broken. By that time, many stocks would have fallen a lot. So if you are swing trading, it would be a good idea not to rely only on this longer term analysis, but look at the market ETFs and the individual stocks to see if their stop levels are being hit. If so, you may close your trade or hedge the position, probably with put options. Let's now move to the broad market ETF analysis. S&P 500 ETF SPY Two weeks ago, SPY made a new all-time high. However, in that market roundup, I mentioned that though SPY made a new all-time high, the backdrop candle color had turned yellow, neutral. Then for two successive weeks, we have bearish backdrop color candle, magenta. This week, price came very close to the memory support line and recovered somewhat from there. In the daily chart, on Monday, price opened with a gap up, ended with an indecisive shape candle, moved sideways for three days and on Thursday and Friday sold off. On Friday, it came close to the yellow direction line and recovered from there. SPY had very high activity on both Thursday and Friday. I mentioned it earlier. Looking inside, we can see that most of the heavy activity days are down days, not up days. That pattern is continuing. However, those heavy activity down days were not 
able to turn SPY lower. It was still in uptrend. This week it made a lower low, but the lower high has not come yet. So it is still in uptrend. We have to see if the Thursdays and Fridays sell offs are going to lead to a downtrend. We are not sure of that until this memory support lines are broken. For some reason, when I open QQQ on trade station, you can see Friday's candle is appearing twice. This is actually the repeat of the Friday's candle. So let us move to Metastock for QQQ. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. In the weekly chart, it had displayed a bearish headwind a couple of weeks ago. One week ago, price tried to go up but couldn't reach the high formed by the bearish headwind signal. And this week, it sharply came down. We saw that SPY couldn't break below the weekly memory support, but QQQ could. In the daily chart, price came very close to the watermark resistance level. It displayed a bear release signal. That candle had a bearish shape as well. Next candle was indecisive and then on Thursday and Friday it sharply went down. Volume was very high on Thursday and Friday. The same pattern as in case of SPY, the heavy activity days in the recent weeks and months had been down days. Like SPY, we now have lower low, but clear lower high is not there yet. So it is not in downtrend. We have to see if it turns lower next week. If it does, then QQQ may come into downtrend. Dow Jones Industrial Average Dia. This was the strongest in recent periods. One week ago, the Weekly candle color turned yellow and it remained yellow this week. In the daily chart, this week price broke above the watermark resistance level. That was a new all time high. Very next candle gave a bearish headwind as well as bear release signal. It was a gap down open day. One could try to take a gap short day trade on that day and that trade ended up being very profitable. Dia fell on Thursday and Friday both again with very high activity. Friday recovered a lot from the low of the day. This is in clear uptrend. We have to see if it continues to go down or not. We are not able to predict that because the Friday's candle is very indecisive. It has solid body but quite long lower tail. And the weekly candle color is also yellow, not magenta. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This was the weakest of the four ETFs for quite a while. In the weekly chart, it displayed a bearish headwind several weeks ago that could catch the very top. Since then, the weekly candle color has remained magenta. This week, IWM fell off sharply. The relative performance line is showing that it is hugely underperforming the market. In the daily chart, IWM gave the proper Go with flow trend following short trade setup on this candle. Since then, price has fallen sharply. Right now, it is below the upper boundary lines to oversold. Therefore, we are not going to try any short trade right now. If somebody entered a short trade using the go with flow setup on this candle, then partial position may continue to be held. Activity pattern again 
shows that the heavy activity days are down days. From the market breadth, we see that market is still in uptrend in the longer term. From the market ETFs, we see that three of the ETFs are still in uptrend, only IWM is in downtrend. However, if you are holding stocks, then you have to look at the individual stocks if they are falling more sharply or not. Probably many of them are falling much more than is shown by the ETFs. And you had to book profit to preserve your capital or probably to protect profit using put option. Q traders could also take many short trades. I took a few of them and I will share the result of some of them along the way. Taking shots when the market is starting to drop are extremely profitable if you do that using put options because the volatility explodes and the market was at the very top, volatility was very low. When it starts to roll over and fall sharply as it did this way, volatility goes up heavily and the put options become extremely profitable. So using the Q systems and techniques, you could not only protect profit, but also add to your profit using these options trading techniques. I will explain some of them after the regular topics. Now we continue with our sector industry analysis. For week sector performance, we are looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together, they give us four weeks or about one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. In last few weeks, we saw that sectors were moving up one week and moving down one week. That changed this week. In the last week, sectors fell and the fall continued this week as well. Nine of the 11 sectors declined from financials all the way to consumer discretionary, showing a bearish picture at the sector level. In the previous market roundup, though QQQ had gone up, based on the sector analysis, I had warned against taking long positions in infotech sector because last week also infotech as a sector was down. That was very useful analysis because this week infotech became one of the worst performers, going down by almost 5%. Utilities is the best performing sector and it is the only one that is up over five days as well as on Friday. We can see that from Q scorecard. If at all you are looking for buy opportunities, you may look into this sector. While doing industry analysis, we will try to identify some possible buy opportunities. However, keep in mind that during market weakness, it is much easier and more profitable to take short trades than long trades. Short trades can be taken with stocks or it can be taken with put options. If you don't want to take short on stocks, you can use put options. Consumer discretionary is the worst performing sector, falling by more than 5%. You may be cautious about long positions in this sector. Later on during industry analysis, we will see that the weakness in consumer discretionary is pervasive. Let's move to industry analysis now. These are 10 of the best performing industries. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 days scores. Two of the 10 best performing industries are in utilities. 
these are water utilities and electric utilities I identified two stocks SBS in water utilities and EBR in electric utilities both are looking bullish SBS has an optimal valuation and it gives 4% dividend yield on Tuesday it gave a go with flow buy setup and SBS went up by 15.4% this week that is how we use the 360 degrees analysis we are trying to take long positions in strong industries though the market fell down sharply utilities went up and in a timely manner we could drill down identify a value stock SBS take the go with flow trade on Tuesday and made substantial profit in the trade in electric utilities this stock EBR it's a Brazilian electric utility stock it also gave a go with flow buy setup on same day Tuesday EBR went up by 25% this week this shows that in spite of market weakness using industry strength fundamental strength and technical setup it is possible to take profitable long trades however that doesn't mean it is easier than taking short trades in the short direction there were many many opportunities and you could take them more confidently if you use put options you could reap huge profit we we'll look at some of those option trades for now let us use scorecard first look at the sectors then look at the industries the best performing industries locate water utilities electric utilities and drill down into SBS and EBR sector analysis using Q scorecard we are looking at the 11 sectors scorecard and heat map across 12 monthly review periods and then over 10 days 5 days etc cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness the scorecard shows that in the current week over five days period utilities and energy are strongest healthcare consumer discretionary are the weakest it also shows the transition infotech that used to be strong cyan earlier is now weak if i expand to the latest days we can see over one day period and over two days periods infotech is actually the worst performer with the lowest score and deep magenta color you can also see the nice transition from strength to weakness for all these three sectors infotech healthcare consumer discretionary just a while ago healthcare was the best performing sector and this is how using the scorecard you can identify the turning point well ahead of others and we can then drill down into industries locate weak fundamental stocks and look for short opportunities in them utilities is the best performing sector we can see over five days only two sectors are up that would be utilities and energy however energy is not up on Friday instead utilities and consumer staples are up so over both five days and over Friday utilities is the only sector that is up that's why I mentioned that if you are looking for long opportunities at all probably it would be good to look for them in utilities let's look at the industry scorecard in the industry scorecard the best performing sectors over five days are shown with cyan color water utilities and electric utilities these are two of the strongest industries let's drill down into water utilities instantly from the stock scorecard we can see that SBS is optimally valued the valuation is in cyan color pays a dividend of 4% it has a short squeeze potential as well it 
went up by 15% this way. Let's have a look at SBS technical charts. SBS in the weekly chart, it made a very nice double bottom. In fact, created a false downside breakout. For three weeks now, the candle color has turned cyan, that is bullish. In the daily chart, we had a watermark level and several bullish headwinds came when price tried to retest that level. Isn't it amazing how the bullish headwinds could catch the very bottom while it was also creating a false downside breakout. Then it started to move in uptrend. We know that because there was a memory support line. Memory support lines can come only if the stock is moving in uptrend. Then on this Tuesday, we had the sand color candle after a dip in price. That was the go with flow long trade setup. Weekly was already cyan for several weeks. So we could take a long trade at that point. If we were using real time sonar, then we could probably take the trade during the day itself at a lower price point. Since then price has gone up. Partial profit could be booked by Friday. The industry is strong. Fundamentals are strong and technicals are strong. So in this case, Q guideline is to hold partial position trying to let profit run. As you may see, in this case, we are okay to take the trade even if price was close to the upper boundary level when the go with floor long trade setup came because in this case, price was turning from downtrend to uptrend. In that case, we expect that the first go with flow trade setup will come closer to the upper boundary lines. If it is in an established uptrend, then we would not take a long trade if the sand candle closed so close to the upper boundary lines. But in this case, it was okay because it was starting to turn from downtrend to uptrend. The other utility stock that I mentioned is EBR. It's a Brazilian utilities company. There is not much fundamental data available for this stock. This made a very nice higher low and higher high in the weekly chart. The weekly candle color was bullish for three weeks. In the daily chart, again on Tuesday, we had a sand color candle that was a go with flow long trade signal entry could be made at the close of that day by friday it has given enough profit partial profit would be booked again as the technicals fundamentals industry all are strong we would like to book partial profit with discipline but continue to hold partial position trying to let profit run this way we can very clearly decide when to hold a trade that is when everything is strong, technical, fundamental, and industry, and when to fold a trade, close it completely when any of them are weak. If the industry is weak, we may close the trade fully. If the technical is near resistance, we may close the full position. And if the stock is now becoming overvalued, we may close the stock in that case as well. In this case, the proper way would be to try to let profit run with trailing stop in such a way that the entire trade is risk free from now onward. From best performing, we move to the worst performing industries of the week. These are 10 of the worst performing industries. We are looking at their 5 days and 10 days course. We study the worst performing industries because then we know where to look for short trades. At the sector level, you saw consumer discretionary is the worst performing. And here we see 7 of the 10 worst performing industries are in consumer discretionary sector, showing widespread weakness in this sector. 
that is contradictory to what people might think, isn't it? Unemployment hit very low level in the USA. It is the lowest since 1969. That is a very long time. So one might expect that consumer discretionaries will do well. But that is not the case. We can see from the actual movement of the sector, the industries and the stocks that it is becoming weaker. That is how instead of looking at news, even not looking at economic data because they may be lagging the actual market move, we can look at the actual movement of stocks, industry sectors and decide where to take longs and where to take shorts. Consumer discretionary is certainly a sector where we would avoid taking longs right now. Seven of the consumer discretion industries that came in this list are computer and electronics retail, consumer electronics, internet and direct marketing retail, footwear, laser facilities, apparel, accessories and luxury goods, and tires and rubber. These are only seven. If you look at Q scorecard, you will see many other consumer discretionary industries are also weak. So it is best to avoid taking longs and if you already had longs, you may be cost us protect profit either using put options or using trailing stock. In apparel, accessories and luxury goods, LULU and UAA. Both are overvalued. Lulu dropped after displaying a bearish headwind at the very top on Monday. Again, the bearish headwind could catch the very top. And UAA gave a go with flow short setup on Tuesday after bouncing down from memory resistance. Combining the bounce down from memory resistance and the bearish Magenta color candle in daily, you could take a low risk short trade in UAA. Let us look at the worst performing industries from scorecard. Locate apparel, accessories and luxury goods and then drill down into Lulu and UAA. In Q scorecard, the worst performing industries of the week are displayed with magenta color over 5 days period. These are the 10 worst performing industries and you can see many of them are in consumer discretionary. If you look down, you will find many, many more are among the weakest industries, the consumer discretionary sector. That is why I mentioned that the weakness is all pervasive. Apparel, accessories and luxury goods, it was strong earlier and now turning magenta. Let us drill down. Instantly from color coding, we know that Lululemon, Lulu, L-U-L-U, has magenta color, overvaluation column, and same is true for UAA. So both are overvalued. UAA dropped by 8.4% and Lulu dropped by 5.3% this week. Let's look at the technical charts to see how you could protect profit in long position and then take profitable short trades. Lulu, a very strong up move in the weekly chart. Again, the daily chart displayed the bearish headwind magically at the very top. If you had a long position, which you could take earlier, you would have significant profit. When the bearish headwind came, you would protect profit using trailing stop. And you will be stopped out as the stock came down. In this case, there was no Q trade setup to take a short trade. However, you could protect profit in existing long position. If the price now goes up little bit and comes down again, that will give a proper go with flow trend following short trade setup. You may keep an eye for that. UAA 
clearly this stock is not as strong as Lulu. Lulu was at a very high price point. This was not. Instead, the price in the weekly chart came to the memory resistance line and this week it dropped. At the same time, in the daily chart, price came up to a series of memory resistance lines. On this day, we had a yellow candle with bear release signal and next day we had a magenta color, bearish flow color candle. A prompt trader could take a shot using the bear release signal itself because price was bouncing down from memory resistance lines. Or you could wait till the next day and take a shot using fine tune chart somewhere in the upper half of the magenta candle. By Friday, it has dropped a lot, giving significant profit. The industry is very weak, technicals are weak, and the stock is overvalued. So in this case, you might consider booking partial profit with discipline and holding partial position trying to let profit run. Other than best and worst performing industries, we also study accelerating and decelerating industries. Accelerating industries are those which were behind others but now starting to move faster. They may still be behind but starting to gain momentum. We look for long opportunities in these industries. We are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days course. Advertising is the most accelerating industry and I identified this stock CRTO. It has optimal valuation high earnings growth over annual as well as recent quarters and it is close to 52 week low. CRTO broke out of memory resistance on Friday. You may keep an eye on this stock for possible buy opportunity in the coming days. This example illustrates that even in a very bearish market, there may be possible buy opportunities. Again, even if buy opportunities are there, Bigger and easier profit in a down market is made on the short side, not on the long side. Let us look at the accelerating industries in scorecard. Look at advertising and then drill down into CRTO. In Q scorecard, the most accelerating industries of the week are shown by cyan color under page 5 days column. Advertising is of interest because it is the most accelerating and it is also one of the strongest industries. We know it is one of the strongest from the cyan color of the score under 5 days column. Also, we can see it was weaker earlier. So, it may give us some turnaround candidates, some value buy opportunities and we indeed have one close to a buy point. Let's drill down. CRTO. Very nice fundamentals stock. Valuation is optimal. The valuation is in sand color and look at the earnings growth. All the three yearly earnings growth, three year period, two year, one year period, all are bright green. And also the latest quarters. Latest quarter, one prior to that and two quarters prior to that. All are bright green. Revenue growth is also positive. This is good value stock with high earnings growth and it has a short squeeze potential also. These are very nice stocks to look for by opportunities. When and if they start to go up, they may give significant profit. Let us look at its technical charts. CRTO in the weekly chart, it made a huge drop in this period, retested the low with a bullish shape candle and went up. That move up gave significant profit. You could look for that long trade starting from the false downside breakout that happened at this double bottom. 
and at the right edge we now see that the same watermark support level was touched several times. In all of those cases, these three cases, price couldn't go down. This week ended with a bullish shape candle. In the daily chart, price just closed above, slightly above the memory resistance line. If next week it opens above the memory resistance and starts to go up, you may look for low risk buy opportunity using Q fine tune chart. That will be an attempt to take a trade based on the double bottom that is forming in the daily chart. The possible exertion at this price level indicated by this heavy activity and also the triple bottom in the weekly chart and the bullish shape of the weekly candle. If you can take a low risk entry opportunity and the stock goes up, it may give very high reward risk ratio trade. Lastly, in usual topics, we discuss the decelerating industries. These are the industries which were ahead of others but now slowing down. We are going to look for short opportunities here. We are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days course. Pharmaceuticals is one of the decelerating industries. You can see it's 10 day scores were much higher than 5 day scores. I found this stock RETA. It is overvalued. It gave a false upside breakout on 25th September. Bearish headwind had appeared at the same price level 5 days before that. You could take a shot on 25th September with a very small stop and that trade has given more than 21% profit by now. Let us look at the decelerating industries from scorecard. Look at pharmaceuticals, drill down into RETA. In Q scorecard, the decelerating industries of the week are shown with magenta color under page 5 days column. Pharmaceuticals is decelerating shown by paste column. It is already weak shown by the 5 day score column and the transition over multiple periods show that it used to be very strong earlier and just now starting to turn weak. This may give us very profitable short opportunities. Let's drill down. RETA, this is a stock that is overvalued and it has negative earnings growth in the latest quarter. These are very lucrative stocks where we can look for short opportunities. Let's look at its chart. RETA had a very sharp up move. Two weeks ago, the weekly candle color turned yellow. One week ago, it had turned magenta bearish with a very bearish shape candle and this week price dropped heavily again. In the daily chart we had a bearish headwind at the very top again. Probably there was no bearish headwind trade setup. At least you could protect profit in existing long position using trailing stop. Then on this magenta candle price tried to go above the watermark created by the bearish headwind signal and had a sharp reversal day. In fact, that day gave a gap short day trade setup. If you were watching, you could take it. The shot could be taken somewhere in the upper half of the candle. By the end of the day, it gave significant profit. If you didn't take the gap short day trade, you could take the short trade at the close of the day using the false upside breakout, the existence of the very headwinds signal and the fact that the price was at a very high price point in weekly and it was also creating kind of false upside breakout there. By Friday this trade has given significant profit. The industry is weak, fundamentals are weak, technical is very weak 
so in this case again we would like to book partial profit for sure and hold partial position trying to let profit run those were the usual topics we have several miscellaneous topics to discuss today before that let me summarize this week's market the market is still in uptrend in longer term weekly interval we can see that from market breadth from nasdaq and nyse broad indices also when we look at the market etfs we see most of them are still in uptrend only iwm is in downtrend spy qqq and dia are continuing to be in uptrend on thursday and friday all the etfs were down however they recovered significantly from the day's low and some of the etfs are near support level the yellow direction line or memory support level so it is not the best position to start taking new short trades right now you may watch the market next week to see where it is going and decide whether to continue taking shots or wait for a while it is probably not the right time to start taking new long trades also probably except some of the strong industries that we discussed some of them are in utilities if the market continues to go down it will be much easier to make profit from the short trades and put options can be used very effectively in the rest of the session i will explain some of the trades that i took and they gave huge profit let's start with hpq could you short it at the very top let me explain how i shorted it let me start with technical charts hpq it was at the highest price level this week and the week ended with a very bearish shaped candle bearish color candle also weekly activity was very high in the daily chart there was a bearish headwind earlier this week price tried to go above that and reverse sharply this is the same pattern that i explained just now in the pharma stock there is a bearish headwind that creates a watermark level price tries to retest that level and then falls down showing that the bears are still controlling the price move i noticed the bearish headwind that came on friday it started coming right from the early morning so i have a list of stocks that i drop on q sonar hpq was one of them and i could see that it was flashing the headwind signal from early morning then i switched to fine tune chart and took a shot as price was going below early range low and that was also going below the memory support line i used a put option and by the end of the day the trade gave more than 100% profit that was not even using weekly options it was using monthly options just out of the money which became in the money by the time the market closed when an option trade gives 100% profit in one day q guideline is to book profit on at least half position so that we get all our investment money back and then we can continue to hold the remaining half position trying to let profit run with house money this was a very profitable short trade that i could take but this was not the only one i will explain few others later now let us look at the pharma industry stocks we already saw that pharma is decelerating it has turned weak it was strong earlier we saw a stock reta that gave us significant profit 
let us now use the complete 360 degrees analysis to look for trades in additional weak stocks in pharma so we start with q scorecard let's start with sector level healthcare as a sector was very strong now it is turning magenta weak over five days period and the PACE 5 days column is showing that as a whole the sector is decelerating. Let's drill down. Pharma is the weakest industry inside healthcare sector. Its 5 days score is magenta showing weakness and PACE 5 days column is showing that it is decelerating. You may note that just like healthcare sector as a whole, Pharma was strong earlier. Because it was strong for a long time, it is expected some of the stocks will be overvalued. So we are going to try to look for short setups in these overvalued stocks. Let's drill down. These are the pharma stocks and the overvalued stocks are shown with magenta color under valuation column. Let's delete the other stocks. Now we have only the overvalued stocks and we are going to look for short opportunities in them. We can click the Metastock button to transfer the symbols to Metastock or TraceStation button to copy and transfer the symbols to TraceStation Radar. Let's use TraceStation. We can drop the symbols in TraceStation Radar using Ctrl V and I have set it up so that any symbol having the Q trade setups, bounce, box, Edwin, go with flow for the four different market conditions, exhausting, sideways, reversing, and trend following can be shown immediately. And we can also look for breakout trades. I have already done the analysis. These are the five stocks that I found. Recent Pharma 360 degrees trades. Let's have a look at their technical charts. ACRX, it created a double top in the weekly chart and at the same time it created a double top in the daily chart. We had a bear release signal on this candle. It was accompanied by heavy activity. Just the prior day had very heavy activity as well, but that was an up day. So we could take a sideways market short trade at the close of this day. Because of the long lower tail, the short could be initiated on the next day around the same price level. Since then price has dropped a lot. It has hit the memory support line at the right edge both in the daily as well as the weekly. So at least partial profit would be booked. We could take the short in this case using double top sideways market box trade setup and short it at the very top. Even using stocks, it gave very high profit. Okul. Again, the same pattern playing out in the daily chart that we saw in RETA. Daily displayed a bearish headwind signal that created a watermark resistance level. Price tried to go above that but reversed with a bear release signal. In addition, it had a bearish headwind on the same day. On top of that, it was reversing from a memory resistance line that is coming from far, far away. Using all those signals, you could confidently take a short trade at the close of this day looking at the lower tail the actual trade might be initiated one day later if next day price was going up you could wait for one more day and take the short trade if you were watching this stock using q sonar then looking at the bearish headwind signal you could probably take a short on this red color candle itself using fine tune chart. By Friday, it has crossed 
below the memory support line in daily it has covered more than risk distance so at least partial profit would be booked the stock is weak fundamentally technicals are weak and the industry is very weak so you could book partial profit and hold on to partial position trying to let profit run that way we have very clear idea when to completely book profit and when to book partial profit let's look at the next stock omer in the weekly chart it created a false upside breakout one week ago the false upside breakout was completed that week ended with bearish shape as well as bearish color candle one two three four five so this week when price was starting to go down you could short it on monday you could short it one week ago itself on this magenta color candle using the sideways market box short trade setup either on this candle or probably on this magenta candle the magenta candle had very high activity so you could take a shot at the close of the magenta candle and that trade has given huge profit not sure if this drop was related to earnings if it was related to earnings then the shot could be taken using not stock but probably using short call vertical and if there was no earnings here then the shot could be taken using stocks as well sbbp another pharmacy stock here you could take the shot on this magenta color candle that was a go with flow short trade setup in the daily chart it had a long lower tail so the actual shot could be initiated next day and profit could be booked at the lower boundary level it has now recovered a little bit came to the value area came to the memory resistance lines if it tilts down again and gives us a magenta color candle that may give another go with flow short trade setup in the daily chart we have to see if the weekly is also turning bearish right now the weekly is not bearish enough to allow us to take a short trade however that may change if the daily starts to till down next week txmd the last pharma stock that we can look at here price was going up in uptrend then we had a bearish headwind at the very top which also had a watermark resistance we had a bear release signal so one could combine the signals and take a short trade on this yellow candle where we had the bear release signal again and also the bearish headwind signal Short could be taken at this level, stop just above recent high. By this week, it has given much more than the risk distance as profit. We could identify these five stocks from Q scorecard. They were fundamentally weak, and when we saw the industry was starting to weaken. we could look for short opportunities in this overvalued stocks and using the q technical signals we could take very low risk entry opportunity short entry in all of them this shows how the complete 360 degrees analysis can be applied using q scorecard and q charts we could do the same analysis that we did for pharma industry for the electric utilities let us see if we can find some other possible buy opportunities in electric utilities we start from sector level utilities is the best performer drill down sort them again electric utilities is the second best performer drill down let's look for the value stocks remove the rest these are the value stocks transfer the symbols to trade station drop the symbols 
Literary Station show if there is any possible buy opportunity as of Friday and we can see several of them are lighting up with cyan or green color. Let's have a look at them. ETR looks interesting, isn't it? In the weekly, it is bouncing up from multiple memory support lines. Previous week also had long lower tail. This week has a bullish shape candle. Color is still bearish, but the shape is very bullish. In the daily, we have a go with flow trend following long trade setup. So you could consider taking a long in ETR, isn't it? EXC, weekly similar pattern to successive weeks with long lower tail. However, there is a memory resistance line nearby. Price is near memory support, but it is also near memory resistance. Daily is also near memory resistance. So we would let it pass. ETR is a better opportunity. Let's look at SO. Again, in the weekly chart, very similar pattern. Price bouncing up from memory support line to successive weeks of bullish shape candles with long lower tails. And here, the weekly candle color has turned neutral. In daily, it broke out of the memory resistance. Price is bouncing up from the memory support. So using the 360 degrees analysis, top down analysis, we could start with utility sector, go to electric utilities industry, look for fundamentally strong stocks, in this case, optimally valued stocks, drop them in sonar, and using the trade setups, we could identify SO or ETR as possible by opportunities. If the utilities industries continue to go up, both of these stocks may give significant profit relative to the risk taken in them. Isn't it nice that even in a down market, we are able to identify nice looking possible buy opportunities. While the market was going down, I had shared multiple short trade setups in the Q Traders Forum. All of them gave very high profit. Many of them were taken using put options. AMAT is a stock where I mentioned it was trying to go up but there was no long trade setup. So we didn't end up taking any long trade. This example will show that it is important to wait for the Q trade setup before pulling the trigger. Let's look at these four trade ideas shared in Traders Forum on Tandem, Applied Materials, BX, and the ETF SPY. Does this look like a stock you will be concerned about holding? Remember, I mentioned this stock in last market roundup. This was one of the high flyers. At that time, I mentioned that this magenta color candle one week ago had given a go with flow short trade setup. The stock was already overvalued. It had gone up by 1899% in one year when I shared the post. This is how my trade worked out based on the analysis I posted in the forum, I had taken a short trade on this go with flow short trade setup day and since then price fell in three days using put option, I had more than 300% profit. It was coming to a double bottom. You can see there was an earlier low from where price went up significantly. So when we came to the double bottom, I was watching it carefully. And I saw that it was struggling to go below that. I had very large profit, so I decided to close the entire position. This turned out to be very profitable because as I mentioned, when the market first 
starts to go down from a very high price level put options are very profitable because of the delta gain and also substantially because of the volatility gain a stock that is showing an effort to rise along with its industry three days ago i shared this analysis on applied materials a mat let's look at the snapshots as of that time i saw that the weekly had displayed a bullish headwind signal after a sharp drop in the daily we had multiple bullish headwind signals and at the right edge it broke out of the memory resistance line However, I saw all the daily candles had long upper tails. I mentioned that in the forum. I was going to look for possible buy opportunities following Q trade setups. I also shared industry and fundamental data. Semiconductor equipment industry was weak, starting to turn cyan with acceleration shown in the paste column. And Emet's fundamentals were very strong. Good valuation as well as very nice earnings growth. That was my basis of trying to look for long opportunity. How it worked out? I followed up with the chart. As the market fell down, I saw that instead of giving a long trade setup, it turned lower and gave me a magenta color candle. So I scratched the trade idea. As I mentioned, when the market is turning bearish, it is much easier to make profit on the short side. So I scratched the idea of taking long trade in Amen. Technical short setup in asset management stock. That was on BX. I shared it two days ago. Let us look at the snapshots. In the daily chart, price was creating a lower low and lower high. We had a magenta color candle and price also broke below the memory support line. I have mentioned this technique many times. When we have a price open below a memory support line and then we see price is continuing to go down, then we can Look for shorts using fine tune, early range breakout technique. In this case, it also happened to give us a gap short day trade opportunity. So I switched to the fine tune chart. Price was opening at the blue pivot level below previous day low. Sorry, th this is below previous day low, this level. And then price went below early range low. We could take a shot at that time. Stop will be just above early range high. By the end of the day, it gave us much more than risk distance as profit. And day traders could book full profit. Swing traders could continue to hold the position because this was just the signal day of the go with flow trend following short trade setup. Let us look at BX industry fundamental analysis also. As I shared, asset management and custody banks, the industry was not weak. We can see instead of showing weakness, it was actually turning from magenta to cyan. So industry was not weak, though technically we had a setup. And what about fundamentals? Fundamentally, BX has medium valuation. Earnings actually went up in the latest quarter. That is why in the post I mentioned this as a technical setup. This was not a 360 degree setup. However, when the market is starting to go down, medium valuation stocks and even good value stocks, strong fundamental stocks can go down. So it is okay to take technical short trades when the market starts to fall down because majority of stocks will go down. Let us see how the trade played out. There is no follow up. Let's look at the live charts. I took a short trade on this day and since then price went down. 
the trade has certain profit if price hit the yellow direction line next to it I may book partial profit at that point the trade is still on the last trade idea that I would like to cover from traders forum is SPY the last forum idea we'll discuss is trading gap accompanied by trend line breakout with options for more than 150% profit the heading sounds very much like BX because in case of BX also we had a gap short day trade opportunity that was accompanied by support line breakout we had the exact same setup in SPY I explained the trade using charts SPY on this day opened with a gap down and the memory support line was very close looking at a gap down open that shows up in Q sonar I switch to fine tune chart price opened on that day at the blue pivot line that was below previous day's low the red pivot line after that the early range low and high lines formed and on this candle price went below early range low I took a shot around this time that was based on a gap short day trade setup and also because of the fact that it was breaking below the memory support line in case of BX price already opened below memory support in this case price opened slightly above memory support but it broke below the memory support by the time it went below early range low so we could take a short trade confidently then price came to this price point around 289.40 to 89.50 that was the price level in the daily chart of the previous low here so I was keeping an eye on this price level here the profit was around 60% using put options so I booked partial profit later on it came down heavily at this point profit was around 200% but I didn't book further profit I already booked enough lots to make the trade risk free during that day price went up next day price went below early range low again and when price came to this level I had more than 150% profit and I closed the entire position this was a very easy trade very low risk trade you can see from the narrow stop loss gave 150% profit I also could take similar trade on Daya on Friday let me go to live charts to explain the Daya trade Daya I am looking at it using the daily chart on the left and 5 minutes 5 tune chart on the right on Friday price open in the daily chart just above the memory support line market was bearish so I was looking for short trade I switched to fine tune chart and I saw after creating the early range high and low price fell below early range low sharply at the same time price was going below the memory support that was there in daily again a very narrow stop loss trade could be taken during the day I had more than 100% profit I booked entire position later in the day price went up in the daily Daya as well as few other ETFs ended Friday with a long lower tail so it was I think a good decision to book profit anyway I had more than 100% profit I have some other put options in stocks and I didn't close them because on Friday they didn't end with long lower tail their daily candles are very bearish now that is how using the technical charts we can easily decide whether to book 
full profit or whether to book partial profit. Let me spend some more time. This is also very interesting to traders probably. Live demonstration of how to find buy opportunities using Q dashboard. I discussed it in earlier market roundups also. It is more interesting now because the market is very bearish. Could we still look for buy opportunities? It is actually quite easy. We demonstrated that in case of utilities. We saw one possible buy in advertising. CRTO. And now we will use a different angle. Those were analysis using top down approach. And now we are going to use Q dashboard inside to look for value buy opportunities. Let's move to scorecard dashboard. This is the dashboard in scorecard. Here we have insights under different categories one that is of interest to many traders including myself is the list of value stocks strongly going up let's scroll down to that best performing optimally valued stocks they are in different sectors and industries we can copy the symbols to TradeStation trader we could do that for Metastock also. For Metastock, we'll copy the symbol column. For Trestation, we'll copy the ticker column. Let's use Trestation for now. Once we drop them in Trestation, it will show us any possible buy opportunity. These are a handful of stocks. We can go through all of them. BSIG. Immediately, the chart shows it is of interest, isn't it? Weekly is making a double bottom. This week has high activity, up week. Weekly candle shape and color, both are bullish. Daily is also having a double bottom, very high activity on Friday. Price is just below memory resistance. Next week, if it goes above that and it gives a low risk entry opportunity, this may be a good buy opportunity. This came from the dashboard inside of optimally valued stocks. So we know this is already a good value stock. We can drill down further in Q scorecard, but we know these are already optimally valued stocks. SGH. Again, a very nice looking move this week. The weekly candle is bullish, very high activity in the weekly chart. Weekly is creating a kind of Ball pattern going up gave us a false downside breakout this week. On Friday, it had a gap up move. We may see if it is moving sideways for a few days. If it does so, then when it breaks out of the high of this candle, we could take a long trade. Or if it pulls back a little bit, goes down and then tilts up again, gives us a sand color candle, then we may. Look for the go with flow trend following long trade setup. Next stock SIR. This is having two random move. Friday went up sharply, but the stop would be very far and we have a memory resistance line nearby. So we will not consider taking long trade in SIR. ASNA. The weekly is magenta. Daily is not in clear uptrend, so we are not going to look for buy there CRTO remember we discussed CRTO from the strong performing industries list advertising is the best performing industries we drill down we found CRTO as optimally valued stocks and interestingly it came in the dashboard insight as well so you could locate the stock in different ways you could locate it from sonar also it came as a breakout candidate. So the same stock appeared as a breakout candidate in Sonar. It came when you did top-down analysis, trying to look for strong stocks in strong industries. It also came from the dashboard inside. And let us look at GE, our last stock that we will see today. GE had a very sharp down move, but this week, see, it's a beautiful pattern in the 
weekly and daily chart weekly had a bullish headwind at this point that created watermark support levels price tried to go below that however this week reversed sharply gave us a bull release signal very bullish shape candle bullish color candle prior week had heavy activity down week and this week even higher activity up week so this is looking very nicely bullish in the weekly chart and in the daily chart we had a bullish headwind again price tried to go below that this week reversed creating a false downside breakout so we have false downside breakout in weekly and daily both daily has broken above the memory resistance line you may see if it is going sideways if it does so when it breaks above the high of this candle you may take a long trade or another possibility could be if it tilts down and goes up again gives us a sand color candle that would give us a go through trend following long trade setup in this way you can always find trade setups using q techniques q systems you can even find long trade setups in a down market however as i said already several times no harm repeating again in a down market it is much easier to make profit on the short side you may keep that in mind That is all that I wanted to share in today's session. Thanks a lot for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitable.